throat problems. Um, Lord, I need you in the PCC book. Okay. <clears throat> Evening, everybody. Let's stand and we'll sing hymn number 527 to start our service tonight. Hymn number 527, Be Thou Exalted. We're going to sing all three verses. Be Thou Exalted. Be Thou Exalted forever and ever, God of eternity, the Ancient of Days. Wondrous in wisdom, majestic in glory, perfect in holiness, and worthy of praise. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever, amen. Be thou exalted, O Son of the Highest, Savior of sinful men, and Redeemer and King, one with the Father, co-equal in glory. Humbly we come to thee, our homage to bring. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. Be thou exalted, O Spirit of power, dwelling within our hearts to keep us from sin. God of the ages and Lord of salvation, ruler of heaven and earth, thy praises we sing. Be thou exalted, by seraphs and angels, be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems 
of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. Well, good day, everyone. Good to have you tonight. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, I pray you'll meet with us once again, and Lord, work in our hearts and our lives. And Lord, we do, do pray that you would, uh, Lord, uh, do your work in our hearts tonight, and that, Lord, it'll be evident that you're here. Lord, may your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Now, as we pay attention to the PowerPoint, we're just going to sing, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. <clears throat> We'll sing both verses. Sometimes when life seems gentle and blessings flood my way, I turn my gaze away from you and soon forget to pray. But when the sky grows darker, and courage turns to fear my anxious voice cries upward with words you long to hear lord i need you when the sea of life is calm oh lord i need you when the wind is blowing strong whether trials come or cease keep me always on my knees lord i need you lord i need you lord help me to remember i'm weak but you are strong I cannot sing apart from you, for, Lord, you are my song. Although I'm prone to wander and boast in all I do, Lord, keep my eyes turned upward so I depend on you. sea of life is calm oh lord i need you when the wind is blowing strong whether trials come or cease keep me always on my knees lord i need Ushers, let's go ahead and come tonight. May your will. As we come, we pray for God's will to be done. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, we pray for thy blessing tonight as we, Lord, take time out to uh, be thankful to you and acknowledge who you are and, and, Lord, how you provide and how you take care of us. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this offering, uh, Lord, as it might, uh, Lord, be an instrument in your hand to be a blessing and a help in the cause of Christ here upon this earth. So, Lord, bless, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight as you give.
Amen. We're glad that you are here this evening. And uh, I want you to turn in your Bible to Psalm 119. And the reason why uh, the pastor mentioned, I think about two or three times about Psalm 119. And then, of course, that got me interested in it. And so um, I began to look at it again. And then I remembered uh, that I had an old Schofield Bible. And, uh, you know, some of the notes are pretty good. Others I, I looked at and I said, I can't believe I wrote that. Uh, and, of course, uh, progressing in my Christian life. Uh, but I, I run across uh, where uh, that I had outlined the whole, uh, whole chapter of Psalm 119. And uh, they were uh, all in R's. Uh, you know, where that uh, you have uh, uh, that, where that everything appeared in R's. And so uh, I, I began to look at one particular portion of, of the psalm, and, and that's what I'm going to preach on tonight, is the Psalm uh, 119 in verse 33 to verse 40 uh, in your Bible. Uh, but before you do that, I'd like for you to uh, just think about this, if you will. We see in, the, uh, in Psalm 119, the word of God is described as the law of the Lord. Uh, that's one of the descriptions that you will see uh, in the, uh, uh, Psalm 119. Uh, you'll see his testimonies. And, of course, all of these meaning the same thing, uh, the word of God. And so we see the testimonies. Uh, there and then not only that it talked about the precepts over and over in Psalm 119 and then uh, the statutes uh, we see that uh, there in the word of God as well and then we see also thy commandment thy commandments are given uh, and of course that meaning the word of God as well and then the word of truth the word of truth, and so uh, we see the Bible telling us uh, from the word of God, and then also righteous judgments, righteous judgments, and then, of course, uh, thy word, uh, you see that in there, the word of truth, and, and uh, just different things like that, and if you want to even, uh, uh, where it talks about uh, uh, the word of God being of where it would be a precept, of the Lord or something of that nature. You'll see that over and over again in the book of Psalms. And of course, uh, we see that uh, in the book of Psalms, I don't know whether you've ever noticed, uh, if you uh, look in your uh, Bible, uh, and I, I think it has to be in your Bible, it probably would not be on your phone or in a tablet. Uh, but if you have an old uh, King James Bible, uh, you will see uh, there uh, in the uh, Psalm 119, where you'll see 22 sections uh, that are, are described in, in Psalm 20, uh, uh, 119. And so we find here this, the sections or the units that you see each, uh, each one of them has eight verses. Uh, every one of them has eight verses. And of course, if you go and say, uh, 8 times 22, you'll come out with 176 verses, which is the total that you find in the book uh, of Psalm here uh, in this writing. And so uh, you, you'll see that if you have your King James Bible. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, very clearly. And then, of course, uh, we see uh, that in verse 33 to verse uh, 40, uh, 40, I'm going to speak upon this subject uh, the, about uh, the uh, resolving uh, to keep the word, resolving to keep the word, or you might say uh, our responsibility is to keep the word. And of course, we see here over and over in the Bible uh, how that you will, uh, did I mention the fact that uh, uh, the uh, uh, each one of these sections 
uh, has the uh, Hebrew alphabet. I don't believe I mentioned that, which is important, that you'll see the Hebrew alphabet in each section, the 22 letters of the uh, Hebrew uh, alphabet mentioned in the Word of God. Uh, but then going back into uh, the verse 33 to 40, where I'm going to be speaking upon, uh, we see that talking about the uh, resolution uh, to keep the Word of God or our responsibility to keep the Word of God. Did you know it's up to us to keep the Word of God? Uh, where that we keep it uh, the way that it is, and I thank the Lord that I go to a church uh, where that there's no controversy at all, as far as I know, about which uh, version of the Bible is to be used. It's always the same Bible, and of course, it is the Word of God. It is the Word of God, and so uh, we see that it is our responsibility to not get caught up uh, in the movement that we see today uh, where that they're talking about other versions of the Bible. I believe I spoke just a little bit in our Sunday school upon that very thing, that I do not know how many uh, different versions of the Bible are, are in circulation today. Uh, I, just unbelievable how many, and no wonder people are confused about the Word of God. And, and so you, you see that over and over in, in the Bible. And then uh, not only that, but it's our responsibility uh, to tell people why. You know, it's just not good enough to say, well, I, I believe the King James Bible. Why do you believe it? Why do you believe the, the, the King James Bible is the Word of God? And, of course, uh, uh, that's altogether a different message. Uh, but uh, there is uh, proof in the Bible about the King James Bible uh, being the Word of God. Uh, there is definitely proof of that being in the Word of God. But notice, if you will, in verse 33, it says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it in, unto the end. Uh, you know, there's uh, seven times uh, in this uh, chapter uh, that the uh, word uh, words uh, uh, teach me is used uh, in this chapter. And, of course, we know that all of them uh, is teaching something about t uh, being taught the Word of God. There is a purpose and a reason why that the psalmist says, Teach me, O Lord, uh, just like here. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Teach me the way of thy statute. And so that's the purpose of him being wanting to be, be taught, uh, being taught of the Lord. And, and so uh, we find here uh, the Bible telling us uh, very clearly uh, that we are to be taught of the Lord. And then we see the, uh, the, the over and over uh, in the Psalms where the psalmist asked the Lord to teach him uh, the word of God. Teach him the the different things, statutes and judgments and, and different things like that. And so uh, we see that the Bible telling us uh, to be taught of the Lord. Uh, that is the greatest teacher of all time, is, is the Lord. And, of course, we have a teacher today, and it's none other than the Holy Spirit of God, or as John chapter uh, 14, verse 26 says, uh, the Holy Ghost is our teacher. And it talks about uh, when Jesus was talking about when he goes away, he would send another comforter uh, to us, and then that uh, comforter would be a teacher uh, teaching us the word of God and everything that we, and bring to mind the word of God. And so we do have a teacher, a teacher uh, to tell us about the word of God. And then, uh, no, not only that, but uh, uh, in order to be taught, uh, it must be on a consistent basis, on a consistent basis. You know, I, I, uh, as the preacher used this morning, uh, hot or cold, uh, that very thing uh, has happened uh, to me, where that the uh, different ones uh, that would get interested in uh, being taught the Word of God, 
and then all of a sudden they would no longer uh, be uh, uh, hot about that. They uh, they'd sort of just uh, 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 do away with that for a while and, and then come back, and, and that is inconsistency, and it just will not work. Uh, we need to be consistent about uh, the... The Lord teaching us the word of God, and it must be in a faithful way. Uh, we must be uh, looking at it from the viewpoint that we're going to be faithful to be taught of the Lord in the word of God. And so we find here, and, and be steadfast about it. I mean, just not every now and again, but on a day-to-day basis, or uh, whatever it is uh, that you have. Uh, it should be on the, uh, a daily basis where that you get into the Bible and, and look at it and, and let the Lord teach you and guide you into all truth uh, in the Word of God. And so uh, here we see uh, that it's just more, it's more than just reading your Bible. Uh, you know, that reading your Bible is okay, uh, but we need to be taught from the Word of God. And that's where study comes in, uh, studying the Word of God and, of course, we, we see that over and over in the Bible, where that the Bible, uh, in, you know, in one verse that we're used to, study of show thyself approved unto God a workman that need to not be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. And certainly that is why that we need to study the word of God and be taught of the word of God so we can divide the word of God in a manner that will be truthful and not uh, just go about and, and look at it and th- uh, uh, think that we know something when we don't and misuse it and, and diff- have a wrong meaning of it, uh, different things like that. And so uh, we see that the psalmist said there in verse uh, 33, teach me, O Lord, teach me, O Lord. And then we see that in verse 34, he goes on, And we know that uh, being taught uh, of the Word of God, uh, there's more to it. Uh, You know, just knowing the the Word and things like that, we must understand it. We have an understanding. And, of course, the psalmist knew that. He said, Lord, teach me. Uh, And then he says, "Uh, give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it uh, with my whole heart. And so here we find that the Bible are telling us from the Word of God here that we need to have understanding. We need, we cannot leave the Word of God until we have understanding of a verse or a a chapter or a book of the Bible. Uh, We have to have understanding in order to do what the Lord would have us to do. And the Lord, uh, the uh, the psalmist said this, uh, give me understanding and he said, I shall uh, keep the law. I will, I'm going to keep the law if you give me understanding about the word of God. I will keep it. I will keep that. And then not only that, but he says uh, that I, w- I shall observe it. I shall observe it with my whole heart. I will observe it. And, of course, the word observe means uh, that he is going to protect it. Uh, we see that he's going to guard it. Uh, with all of his heart and with all of his, uh, with all of his soul. And certainly we see the, the word of God having understanding. When we do that, uh, then we're able to uh, guard it and we're able to protect it. And then we're going to have understanding ourselves about the word of God where that we're going to observe it and we're going to keep the law uh, of, or the word of God in our heart. And so that's important that we see here from the Word of God. And then not only that, but look at verse 35, if you will, where it uh, says there, Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for in them I do do I delight. And so here we see that uh, the word make me has the idea of uh, not as a uh, master of a slave or something like that, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of Psalm uh, 23, where it says, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. And so the psalmist here, and I don't know who the psalmist is. Uh, you know, 
who wrote it. I don't know, and I've looked at different commentaries, and they don't know who wrote it. And, and you know, you can't say, well, David wrote it. I don't know that to be true. Uh, but whoever wrote it, uh, we're coming to the point where he says, I want you to make me to lie down in green, or uh, I want you to make me to lie, uh, to, to go in the path of thy commandments. And, of course, the, uh, David said to lie down in green pastures. Uh, make me to lie down in green pastures. And so we see here the idea uh, behind it that the Lord uh, will, will help you and encourage you to go in the path which you delight. Because he wanted to go there, he delighted in the word of God. He, he dwelled upon it, he thought about it, and he delighted in the word of God. Uh, do we want to be taught of the word, uh, the word of God? Do, uh, do we have that interest uh, where that we could call upon the Lord and say, Lord, teach me the word of God. Lord, teach me the word of God with understanding. Lord, give me understanding about it. Teach me and then make me to do, uh, go in the path uh, that word of thy commandments. Uh, make me to go in that uh, path uh, where I delight. I delight to be in the word of God. And, of course, we see from the word of God, I, you know, uh, you know when, before I got saved, I wasn't a student at all. I mean, I just simply did not, I did not study and things like that. And, of course, uh, since I got saved and, and things like that, and, and then uh, I began to apply myself to study the Word of God. And, and then when God called me to preach, I've been, I've been studying ever since and, and uh, just delight in it and to just see what God has for me uh, from the Word of God Every single day, and I, I, I many times uh, uh, where that God will show me a, a new truth, and I tell you, it delights me to see how that God will show us uh, the the truth of the Word of God, and and of course going into the commandments of the Lord or into the Word of God. The path uh, says the path of Thy commandments. For do I delight? You know, you think about the path there, and of course you think about uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14, uh, where it talks about the broad way and the narrow way, and of course the path is the narrow way. Uh, you know, that's the hard way, the path of, of uh, his commandment, to studying the word of God and things of that nature. And so it's never easy, it's never easy to go into the path of the commandment of the Lord in the word of God. And it's very difficult and, and time-consuming and things of that nature. But it's delightful uh, when you go into and find truth uh, that will, will help you. And I got to thinking about this. Uh, you know, uh, I read a Pilgrim's Progress uh, sh uh, several times. And um, I, the book got away from him. I think I loaned it to somebody and they never did return it and of course a lot of books have had gone away out of my out of my sight and for that simple reason that people didn't return it but if you've never read Pilgrim's Progress you ought to read it you ought to read that and to find out the path that he took and it was a difficult path and of course that's our path that we take in the word of God going down that path a way that where that it's it's not easy to do that, and then not only that, but we find here in verse thirty six and thirty seven, we will read that where it says, "Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way." And so we see that. Uh, the, uh, the psalmist said here, incline my heart. And, of course, he's talking about we must be focused. We must be focused upon the word of God. Uh, that's, uh, that's our focal point is being inclined uh, to the word of God. We must 
focus upon it and have nothing else uh, to do. And, and, of course, when we think about uh, focusing upon the Word of God, uh, then naturally uh, it comes to be that we are, we are really involved in it, getting involved, and, and just not reading it uh, to say, well, I, I, I've done my reading today, and it has nothing to, uh, up, uh, in my life to help me and encourage me and to instruct me in the things of the Lord. But when we focus upon the Word of God and pay attention to the Word of God, then it's going to help us. It's going to help us where that we see that the Bible telling us uh, that, uh, that we need to be uh, focused upon the things of the Lord more than material things. I mentioned that this morning in our Sunday school. So many people today, uh, they're, they're so hooked in uh, to material things. They want the, the material blessings of the Lord, but they don't want the spiritual side of it. They don't want anything to do with the spiritual side of it, and they, all they want to do is reap the blessings of the Lord uh, from uh, different aspects, money, and, and material things that they that the Lord will allow them to have and things like that, and they forget all about the spiritual side of it. We need to focus in upon the spiritual side where that we can grow, where that we uh, can be a productive child of God in the life in which we live. And so here we see that the Bible telling us that there in the Word of God, and turn my eyes from beholding vanity. Vanity means emptiness. It, it, uh, you know, it's like that you would uh, dwell upon uh, money. Uh, money is not uh, a, eternal. Um, you're not going to have it for very long. Uh, and, and it'll all disappear. And things like that, that's an emptiness. Uh, when, you, uh, when you think about that and start focusing upon those things, it, it will not last. It will not last. But when you focus upon the things of God and upon the Word of God and, and you do those things that the Lord tells you to do, uh, then it's going to be altogether different in your life. It will be different in your life. And so uh, we see here the Bible telling us, Turn my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou, thou me in thy way. The word quicken has the idea of reviving. And, of course, the preacher preached on revival this morning. And, and of course, when we begin to get into the Word of God, uh, we'll, we'll experience reviving and to the point where that it will stir us up and, and uh, make us to want to stand for the Lord and, and uh, strengthen us in, in the things of the Lord. And there's so many things uh, that, uh, that it will do in our life. It will confirm us that we belong to the Lord, and, and different things like that when we are established in the Word of God and, and, and where the, we incline our ears and quicken thou me in the way. When we do that, then God is going to do something in our hearts and in our lives. And then uh, not only that, but I want you to see uh, where that it says in verse 38, it says, establish thy word, unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. And the word established has the idea of, 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 of steadfastness and different things like that, making you strong and, and established in the things of God. And, of course, uh, that means that you know what you believe and you're established in that. And, of course, when you are devoted to the fear of the Lord, it meaning that uh, you have reverential trust uh, in the Lord, that the Lord, you trust in the Lord. And you know, you got to thinking about this. The fear of the Lord, the reverential trust that we have in the Lord is going uh, to drive all other fears out of our life. When we totally and completely trust in the Lord, then we'll not have fear of man, We'll not have fear of anything else. Uh, we'll be able to do what God would have us to do without fear of man or any other thing that we're able to do that when we 
just completely trust in the Lord. Trust in Him and, and not lean to our own understanding. When we lean unto our own understanding, that's when we get into trouble. That's when we have problems. But when we trust in the Lord uh, and, and do what he would have us to do, uh, then if we don't have any fear about what man will do, what other, we won't have a fear about economy. We won't have a fear about whether, uh, you know, uh, whether the uh, uh, United States is going bankrupt and we pretty well are there now. Uh, bankrupt and things like that. We'll just not, we'll not worry about those things, uh, but we will trust in the Lord, trust in Him in all things uh, that we receive from the Word of God. And of course, when we trust Him and look to Him for guidance in our life, it'll make all the gathered difference in our, in our life. It will be uh, different uh, to us and, of course, all other fears will just simply vanish away. And then notice, if you will, in verse 39, where that we see once again, Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. And so here we see, turn away my reproach. And, of course, when we see the word reproach, it's talking about uh, dishonoring. Uh, we see that it's talking about disgracing the Word of God, uh, uh, dishonoring the Word of God, disgracing the Word of God in our life. And, of course, uh, we see that we ought not to be doing that. It says, uh, for thy judgments are good. Uh, the Word of God is good uh, for us to know. And it will do away with all reproach. Uh, my reproach, or... Uh, trying to disgrace the Word of God and dishonoring God and things of that nature, uh, we see from the Word of God that it tells us that we ought to just be ones that will, uh, will honor God, uh, that we will look at Him and, and respect Him and to do what the Lord would have us uh, to do. And then there's one other thing here that we see from the Word of God. Uh, in verse 40, where it says, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. And so here in, in verse 40, uh, my thought was longing after the word of God. Longing after the word of God. How that it says, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Or the word of God, I've longed after it. And of course, we know what that means. Uh, we desire it. Uh, we desire the word of God uh, and, and want it in our life and, and want to study it and, and different things like that uh, where that we see that. And then it goes on to say, quicken me in thy righteousness. And of course, once again, the word quicken means revive or, or things like that. Revive me in thy righteousness uh, and different uh, things of that nature that we see. Uh, but uh, uh, preserve me or, or different things like that. Keep alive. Uh, you know, just different things. Quickening means keeping it alive and different, different things of that nature. But the thing that I want you to see more than anything else is the uh, progression of the psalm. The progression, how that he progressed uh, through uh, desiring uh, the, the word of God or resolving uh, to keep the word of God. Uh, we see how that he uh, did that very thing. Look in verse 33 again. Uh, Teach me, O Lord. That was the first one. That's the way that he was going to keep uh, the word of God, by being taught of the Lord. And then he says, not only that, but give me understanding about it. Not only teach me, but I need understanding of the word of God, and I shall keep the law uh, and, and shall observe, to, uh, observe it with my whole heart. And so we see that he is progressing in his, uh, in his life uh, with the word of God. And then, of course, he says, not only that, but make me to go in the path of thy commandments. 
Lord, make me go in that path that I will want to go uh, where the Word of God tells me to go, how that it tells me, and therefore, that's what I delight in. Lord, I, I will delight in that uh, when you will uh, make me or um, uh, give me the opportunity to go in the path of thy commandment. And then, uh, not only that, but incline my heart, incline my heart into thy testimonies and not unto covetousness. The progression of the psalmist, how did he progress? Incline my heart. Turn away my eyes uh, from beholding vanity, and quickening thou me, quickening thou me, and establish me, establish me in thy word. Uh, uh, as a servant, I want to be established in the word of God. And then it goes on to say, and turn away my reproach. Turn away my reproach. I want to, I want to honor you. I, I want to... Live for you, Lord. And, and so we see that it says, And behold, I long. I long after thy precepts. And you know, when we do those things, then I believe that we will have a heart for the word of God. And when we have a heart for the word of God, then we are going to stand by the word of God. We are going to stand by it. And we will not depart from the word of God. Uh, that it says there, I long after thy precepts. I long after thy precepts. And quicken me in thy righteousness. Revive me in, in thy righteousness. And when we do those things, then certainly we are going to keep the word of God. We will keep the word of God in our, in our life. And that is important. That is important to keep the word of God. If we let it go, no telling what will happen. But I, I believe, you know, when the preacher was talking about revival this morning, I said, I, I believe that uh, the psalmist here in these verses of scripture uh, has the, the beginning of revival. When we begin to get into the word of God, when we begin to see uh, for ourselves what we need uh, from the Lord and let him teach us truth and different things of that nature, uh, that's going to be the beginning of revival in our hearts and our lives when we uh, keep the word of God in our lives. And certainly we ought to. We ought to keep it in our heart and in our lives. And, and the Lord will bless us because of what we do, and as a servant of God, and we're all servants, uh, regardless of what you think, uh, you are a servant of the Lord. Uh, you're either a good servant or a bad servant, of whatever it might be, uh, but you are a servant of the Lord. And so we need to keep the word of God uh, to be that servant that will honor God in every aspect of our life. If we don't, if as a servant, if we don't get our, our uh uh, uh, commands from the Lord from headquarters which is the word of God then certainly we're not going to be a, an effective servant of the Lord but reviving us to keep the word of God in our heart let's bow our heads please our heads are bowed and eyes are closed and, and, uh, and we'll just uh, have an a invitation in a few moments and and as always, the uh, Lord speaks to you. And, and as we've always said, the altar is open, uh, but uh, you can make an altar wherever you're at. Uh, that would be a fine. And, and just do business with the Lord, whether he's t uh, talked about this morning, what the preacher talked about this morning or this evening, whatever it might be. Uh, let, let God deal with you. Let God speak to your heart. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God, and for the, uh, the word that was given th this evening and this morning, that we might take it to heart, and Lord, that we might, you might accomplish what is needed in our life, and Lord, that you would lead us and guide us and direct us in the truth of the word of God, 
For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, please, if you would. Stand, and we'll be singing a 161. You need a songbook? Uh, there it is. And so Miguel's going to lead us. You need to come? Come on. Just come on. Do what the Lord would have you to do uh, tonight. Okay? You need to come? As we sing again, would you come? Come on. could have said this morning the revival won't happen without obedience obviously obedience according to God's word no way it is because of God's word and the truth of God that speaks to our hearts convicts us of our need and we make a choice that we don't want to do our thing. We want, we want the Lord. We want to follow Him. And it's when we humble ourselves and submit to what He wants us to do. Boy, what a blessing that is. I tell you, I appreciated the Word of God tonight. I don't know about you, but I love Psalm 119. There is so much there. And boy, what a blessing it would be for you to study that. And look at all the ways that the Word of God is uplifted and encouraged. How with all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. I tell you, it is full of, of, of um, encouragements and admonishments concerning the Word of God. And so, I tell you, what a, what a timely message as we not only heard about revival, but in a day in which we live where the Word of God is not uh, important at all in a lot, of, a lot of places, a lot of hearts. But may that not be it with you in your, in your heart. And so I challenge you, especially this week as we go into the week, uh, let's determine by the grace of God. I'm going to do what God would have me to do. What a blessing. Well, tonight... <clears throat> Brother Tim's going to come and, and he'll uh, give us some announcements and then he'll dismiss us in prayer uh, and pray for what's going on. Okay, you may be seated. All right, just a couple of quick things. Uh, tonight, Soup and Chili Cookoff. This is a fundraiser for our youth for uh, teen camp this summer. So uh, stay with us and have some uh, soup and chili. There's actually a cook-off. I'm not sure how many participants we have in it, but uh, there will be a gift card to the winning 
uh, winning uh, submission tonight. So let's help the teens raise some money and have a good time of fellowship. Uh, also, uh, Wednesday night, uh, 7 p.m., uh, be sure to come for the uh, uh, flooring fundraiser. The dinner for that is at 6 p.m. Uh, this week's dinner is a Mexican night with taco salad, build your own burrito, queso, homemade fried ice cream. Uh, <clears throat> the cost is $5. It uh, says uh, we've made $150 toward the flooring last week, so let's come and uh, raise some more money toward that this week. Uh, we also have Sarah's baby shower coming up this Saturday, the 25th, here at the church at 11 a.m., uh, there is a flyer and reception desk with all the information about it, but uh, please let Susan know if you're going to be able to come so she'll have plenty of seating and refreshments prepared. And then also uh, coming up uh, two weeks from this past Friday, March 3rd, uh, Youth Rally at Cornerstone Baptist Church. There will be volleyball afterwards, and the cost is $7 uh, for the teens. Uh, food will be provided for that. So at this time, if we will stand... Uh, we'll ask the blessing on the food, and we will be dismissed. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, and we thank you for uh, the theme of the day uh, about revival, Lord. We just pray that each one of us would uh, apply it to our own hearts, and Lord, we just pray that we would see uh, revival uh, across our church and across America, because Lord, we know uh, we, we sure need it, Lord. Just bless us now. Uh, be with us in the time of fellowship, Lord. Bless the food and the hands that prepared it today and take us home safely. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.